Hey guys, it's Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today I'm interviewing Sarah, also known as a wild fan appeared, who was making a game called Terraform. Now, it's a monster taming game, and it has been shelved, but she talks more about it in this interview. I hope you enjoy it. If uh, you want to go play the demo, I'm going to have that and a link in the description below. But, let's get into it. I'll let her tell you exactly what Terraform is all about. Terraform is a monster taming game that's for your browser, so it's free to play. Um, we got the idea from actually Neopets, of all things, um, because I realized that it was successful in its own right. It was free. Kids loved it back in the day. I don't know if you ever played that. Yeah. <laughs> May have been a little before your time. Um, I thought like, oh, this is easy enough. Like, we can make something like this. Uh, and then it evolved into what it is now, which is a full-blown game. But we decided to keep the browser aspect to it, so that way it was really ac accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and they, all they needed was a password and an account name, and they could just go. Like, they didn't need to download anything. Um, yeah, it's a monster taming game. Mm. Uh, so, I guess you all just saw Neopets and thought, well, let's just make it. It was just, like, on a fly, or... Like, where you wanted yeah. to make something before. I was talking to my friend who is a programmer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was saying, I'm like, oh, how hard would it be to make, like, a website game? And he said, like, well, like, not too hard. Uh, especially what I was thinking, which was not even, like, a full-on game. It was literally going to be, like, click. Like, you know, a click game. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, I realized, like, something that I loved was pixel art. So I was like, oh, I'll make, like, a pixel art version, which... When you think about it, uh, it basically looks like Pokemon. So <laughs> I realized, like, oh, I'm basically making a Pokemon game, which I've loved. They are my favorite games ever since I was younger. Um, so I was just like, why don't I just, you know, take the next step and kind of make it a full-blown monster taming game. Um, but what I wanted to do was kind of turn it on its head, like kind of take an homage to Pokemon, but not necessarily copy it, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to kind of take the tropes and uh, maybe parry to them a little bit, uh, make the monsters kind of your leaders as opposed to you catching them, mm -hmm. um, have them having like their own societies and their own cultures and stuff like that. So we kind of wanted to make it different from the average, if that makes sense. Yeah, I literally put it on its head. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean... For how short the demo was. I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks it was so short. But uh, it, there's a lot of, like, life to it. I mean, even the oh, thank you. characters, all of them, unique text, you know? Um, I mean, even the I houses are filled. That. Yeah. Sadly, I never made it through the whole demo, even though I played it three times through. Oh, I meant to tell you, we actually fixed the bugs that um, that you ran into. <laughs> Because I, I messaged and I was like, hey, can we fix those? <laughs> uh, we had no idea that the books weren't working and stuff like that. So uh, I apologize for that. It was a little embarrassing. <laughs> well, I got to Queen Grey on one playthrough and I was just like, uh, I really? Don't... Yeah, I didn't. Oh, not... how'd that go? She was too hard. Well, I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to stream it. And I was like, oh, I just want to play. Mm. Okay, well, here I am. Uh, you know, I'm about to beat her. The Heck game yeah. freezes. Again. Oh no! Oh, yeah. We had this is the problem with making it browser. Now I understand why mo more people didn't do this is because it does add another complication, which is when we have an error, we have to catch it when it happens to somebody. So, oh. um, we like you know anytime someone has an error, we're like, okay, can you open up the data on your browser and so that way we can find it. But otherwise, we don't have a lot of control, mm -hmm. um, which is what makes it difficult. Which is why I've considered if I were to go back and keep making it, that maybe we would make it a Steam game. Uh, just because even though it's a really cool idea and a cool experiment, I'm just wondering if, um, unless I had like a whole team of programmers to help me, that it might be a little too um, a little too buggy for people. Right. But I still love the idea of making it really accessible. So we'll see how that goes. So, I mean, obviously what makes it... Pretty unique is, well, one, it's in a browser. Uh, you mm. know, you flip down its head. You got the very much looking like Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal graphics. Mm -hmm. Even the that sound, you know, um, which I all, I freaking love it all, you know, because uh, 
it just seems like a game you you know if it wasn't made now it seems like a game that could have been made back then mm -hmm. <laughs> that know? was that's definitely one of my goals um i i realized the one thing i really loved about those old games and something that i feel like not to not to bash on newer pokemon but something that i think is a little bit missing is just that simplicity mm -hmm. uh that you get with those older games because there's a lot of limitations and i think that there's something really beautiful about that <laughs> not to get all nerdy about it but um i mean there were so many limitations not just with the audio but also with the visuals like you couldn't have too many colors on screen at one time um which obviously we don't have those limitations now but i kind of wanted to capture that in the designs of the creatures um and the fact that it's like the color palette is somewhat limited um mm -hmm. also there's limited channels as far as like how many uh like you know what your music sounds like so i told my composer I wanted it to be limited in that regard. Uh, just to kind of capture that feeling, that nostalgia of that time. Because I do think that a lot of it is nostalgia, but I do think some of it is also, uh, there's just, there's a beauty in it in itself. And I do think that it's a mistake to say that it's like, you know, we've advanced past that and that there's not, it doesn't have its own merit. You yeah, know? yeah. I've, I've played Pokemon Yellow many times. You know, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I got it before I could even remember. I mean, literally, before I can have a memory, <laughs> I've been playing Pokemon Yellow, and I've played it multiple times mm -hmm. over the years. And, you know, especially as I got older, I was like, okay, let me try to remove my nostalgia from it, you know, the best I can. Mm -hmm. It's still just a good game. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can complain there's not more content, but I mean, that's the limitations on the hardware of the time, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it's more so when I guess you get into uh, Gold and Silver even though they had a limited palette the sprites were amazing the art was amazing i agree you know and it's i guess it may be because of the limitations like you were talking about you know they had to do the best with what they had <laughs> and what's so amazing is a lot of people don't realize just how limited it was i still talk to friends about it how each of the sprites and this is what i did as well um you could only use four colors uh just to make sure there was only 64 colors on screen at a time so they just were very limiting with it um, and that includes black and white. So that's pretty much black, white, and two other colors for all of them. Uh, and so I tell them, I tell my friends about that. I'm like, oh yeah, like these sprites, like they own four colors. They're like, no, they don't. They have like way more than that. I'm like, take a look at it. Like really look. And because of like, you know, using black and white and using, you know, artistic tricks, you're able to make it look like there's more colors than there actually are, which is, I think, amazing and very interesting from an artistic perspective. Um, but yeah. Now, something I really enjoy with the pixel art. Um, was that like, did you have like concepts in mind and then had someone else make them or did you make them or what was the No, process? I made them all. Oh. Um, it took, that's why it took so long because, <laughs> um, you know, I had never really done anything like this before. This is my first game. I'm oh, sorry. I'm getting notifications. Um, I don't know if you can hear them, but no. yeah. Um, yeah, the idea was I wanted to pretty much do everything as much as I could by myself. And then the stuff that I couldn't, which was mostly coding, because I don't really have any experience in that, I gave to my friend. I had a little bit of help on the backgrounds with uh, with a friend uh, who's also an artist. Uh, he's credited in the, in the Kickstarter. But for the most part, uh, I wanted the creatures to be pretty cohesive. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do them all by myself. I know that that's not typical. <laughs> But uh, and it probably made it a lot harder than it needed to be. I just figured that that way they would like they would feel married. Right. If that makes sense. It's just quality control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just a control freak is the point. <laughs> so uh, but it was hard, especially because they all have so many different color palettes. I had to make sure that they match the backgrounds. OK, that they none of them like blended too much with each other. Um, if that makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. It, it was challenging, but uh, it was also really, it, it was really um, satisfying to right. be able to make them all. Pretty fulfilling to be able to make some. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks awesome, especially when you go into a battle. You know, the uh, background for when you get into a battle is one of the best. P oh, thanks. Know. Yeah. Um, is that all you all had? Or, or did you all, were you all like, okay, we're stopping here. We're going to wait until this Kickstarter, if it goes through, it goes through, then we're going to work on it or. That's kind of how I felt. I did have a lot more animals uh, made already. 
because mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if it was going to make it. I was hoping it would, uh, but my plan was, okay, I'll make the monsters now. And so that way I could figure out which ones would go well early game. Um, and I was also just excited to make them. So, uh, but then I chose 15 specifically that I was like, okay, these are good ones to start with. Because, you know, I wanted something, I wanted, like, the bigger ones to be uh, revealed later. Uh, but as far as backgrounds, because they took so long, uh, we didn't really, we didn't make any more of, like, battle backgrounds. Although there were, there was a cutscene that was going to be added in, uh, which is kind of a shame. It has animation and everything, but we didn't end up, uh, it didn't end up making in the demo. So, it's a shame. Because it's, it's, there's a lot. <laughs> Well, I mean, of course, just out of the blue, uh, Terraform suddenly got attention. You know, I yeah. guess from your uh, from your perspective, it was just suddenly what over a year later, uh, mm -hmm. people start paying attention to it. Uh, uh, I guess that came as a shock. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I um I thought the game not not necessarily dead, but I thought it was shelved for sure. Uh, my plan was always to go back to it eventually, um, maybe start pitching it to people. The main reason I hadn't sooner is because uh, early 2020, um, I actually, my health kind of uh, plummeted a bit and it made it really hard to work because it's arthritis. So, mm. um, and art is, you know, you need your hands for that. Yeah. So I realized that I couldn't really work on it by myself anymore. So what I had planned was to still make the game mostly... Uh, myself but like now i would need a lot more help considering that now i have limitations um but yeah it's it but it is so nice that they found it and that they actually like it i always thought you know looking back and i'm like oh it wasn't very good you know like there's so many problems with it because you know after a while you know your tastes change and mm -hmm. uh and also you just don't have that much of a perspective on it if you haven't looked at it for a while so I figured nobody really liked it because you know it was it didn't it, was, it didn't succeed, uh, and I knew some people did. I knew kids did because um, I got messages from them, which was really nice. But this was really cool that uh, some YouTubers like you found it and were like talking about it. Like that was really great. Yeah, I mean, I, I know once you when you know when you do something, you're you're a harshest critic when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I, I think it looks pretty fine, and I guess. You're, so you're still thinking of it as a shelved and not just a dead project? Yeah, I think so, because it would be a shame. Um, even if I had to like completely transform it somehow, um, it would be a shame because I think a lot of writers feel this way. I really liked where the story was going to go. That was the thing I was most excited about besides the art was um, because I really wanted to make a game that not only had fun gameplay, but had actually a story that people liked because... Usually with monster taming games, like it's more about the gameplay and about like playing with your friends. It's not really about the story. Mm -hmm. um, but since it's an RPG, I wanted to kind of bring that in where like there's characters you care about and there's, you know, there's drama <laughs> um, and it's fun. And um, so I would really hate to like leave that story behind. Um, I understand if it never comes to be, but I really hope that one day, even if it's in the far future, that it gets made. So I guess just, I mean, honestly, I know you'll have to probably have a higher Kickstarter goal than what you had initially because you'll have to hire, you know, many other yeah, people, including, people. yeah, Pixlars. But I mean, you already have a demo. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know if you've paid attention to some of these Monster Taming game uh, Kickstarters, but they blow $10,000 like USD out of the water. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, like in the first day yeah within the um, first day <laughs> yeah i know it really was just poor timing I, I i had heard that doing it in november would have been better um just because you know like it's before the christmas season like you know people spend their money yeah. on christmas and pokemon was coming out i didn't want it to be completely eclipsed by sun by a uh, sword and shield and so i figured like you know, like, if I waited, like, you know, then, like, I'll miss my chance, which was completely wrong, especially because of the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people started 
uh, playing more video games. And also, like you said, like the trend of monster taming games is like completely blown up. I had no idea until you guys discovered the game again. And I didn't realize that monster taming had become such a trend right now. And it's just very cool. Yeah, I think it's you just fun. pretty much uh, did your Kickstarter right before yeah. it started to explode. <laughs> I mean, literally right before. It really was kind of a blessing, though, because like I said, my health, because like there was nothing that I could have done to prevent that. Like, you know, it's just, you know, it's it just happens. the luck of the draw. So mm -hmm. if I had made the Kickstarter with only like 8,500 or even like 10,000, uh, I would have had to delay the game anyway uh, because I wouldn't have been able to work on it or I would have had to pay more money out of pocket to hire somebody to make it for me. Uh, and it would have been pretty heartbreaking. So if anything, it was kind of a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's disappointing, but um, I was able to focus on other things. I was able to focus on my health um but yeah i i do think that it was really funny that like it, it would have probably been successful if i just waited a couple of months but i um i don't know i think it was probably a good thing oh, yeah. i didn't in the long I mean, run well for i mean are you thinking like of you know like a few months a, a year a couple of years before you possibly think about approaching this again you know, I would say um, that really is to be determined by how my how uh, my health does. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that that's not very clear, but usually these things take a while, like, you know, needing to try new medications and yeah, because um, it really is debilitating in that way, especially when you're working on a project like that. Um, you need to be you need to use work a lot of hours. So uh, what I would say is most likely maybe in one or two years. Uh, that's, I also want to wait it out because I don't know how long this trend is going to last. Cause like right now monster taming is huge, but I don't know if that's going to continue. Uh, so I don't want to start this game. Uh, and then by the time it would be able to come out, which would probably take at least a year that like people wouldn't be interested in anymore. So I just want to make sure that the trend lasts or the, or maybe comes back for a second time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I just want to wait it out a bit. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think... I think right now the genre, while it may be in a boom, maybe it'll go down. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But um, I think it what it really heavily depends on is how well does the next Pokemon game do? You know, mm -hmm. because I think the prime, the principal reason the monster taming genre has exploded is because of how disappointed, you know, people are in the games. I mean, a lot of people are like, I, oh, I love Sword and Shield, the DLC. I mean, I mean you know, uh, but mm -hmm. the fact is, a ton of people, I mean, we're talking about people that's liked Pokemon for 20-something years, <laughs> didn't mm -hmm. like it. So they've been looking for something else. You know, there's some people that uh, love Pokemon, but they just like that type of game. So I don't know. It, I think it really does depend on uh, the next Pokemon games. Um, probably how well the Sinnoh remakes, if we get them, uh, are. Yes. <laughs> the commu like, you know, the community, including myself, have been waiting for those for a while. Um, I think they have to do it eventually. I just don't know. I mean, it's, it's too easy of a money grab, I would think. You know. I know that's. I know they're leaving money on the table. But I think that they are trying to, uh, use as many assets from Sword and Shield as they can. That's why they're making so many DLCs. Uh, I agree with you. I think that's one of the things that really inspired me. Once I realized it wasn't going to be a Neopets, uh, it was going to be more like a Pokemon game. I realized what I really wanted to do was to make a game that I would have really loved. Um, because I feel like the newer ones, even though they are fun in their own right, they're just not the same. Um, they're not challenging as much. And like, you know, they feel like they they really rely on spectacle as opposed to like, you know, old fashioned gameplay or yeah. story. Uh, like, you know, it's more about like, what's the new thing? Like, you know, right now it's um, Gigantamaxing. And before it was like Mega Evolutions and, I just feel like they just keep trying to like up the ante and they kind of lose what made it great in the process. So what I wanted to do was kind of go back to that simplicity. Although I do think I need to change the battle system a little bit. It's a little bare at the moment. Well, uh, did you ever have but, any evolutions thinking about that? Um, my plan was not to necessarily have evolutions, but upgrades. Mm -hmm. uh, so which was, uh, you know, like adding armor, but like you could actually see the armor being added, so like they oh. would look a lot more badass. Um, I hope that's okay. I say that. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's fine. 
I'm not sure who's listening to this. So. Uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to, uh, for, for the most part, I kind of wanted it to be like, what you see is what you get. And it's a little bit of a, of a selfish thing for me because whenever I would play games like Pokemon, um, I would always be a little sad when they evolved. Uh, I think that that's a little bit of me being a girl is that I loved their pre-evolutions. I loved how they looked, how they were like small and cute and compact. They really were like pocket monsters and then they could also be really strong. And one thing that made me sad is that you had to evolve them to continue the game uh, properly. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people try <laughs> to make them like not evolve and then like make them fight, but like really they're kind of useless. Uh, I wanted to like kind of say like they don't have to evolve to be cool. They can still... Um, they can still be cute and also really tough. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to bring uh, to the game. But I'm also open to maybe doing evolutions. It just felt like that would have been a little too close to Pokemon if I had yeah. done that. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, I like the idea of armor, things like that. Um, small upgrades, you know, uh, mm -hmm. on top of the leveling up. Kind of like a regular RPG, you know, like instead oh, yeah. of you wouldn't evolve a human, you would give them weapons. Um, that was kind of my idea was that they, as they get stronger, they would be able to like handle more stuff. Which fits in with the lore of them pretty much being mm -hmm. sentient beings. So, mm -hmm. uh, which was the gray ever going to be tameable or was that like a no go? That's always evil. You know, that is cause I don't want to give anything away. I would say, uh, that is a, to be determined. <laughs> um because that is a story thing that's not just a gameplay thing right um yeah. basically all i'm gonna say is that there's more to them than they seem hmm. okay but yeah for now no they are not tameable mm. definitely not they don't understand you <laughs> and they and they're destroying the planet so well i mean mm, i don't know overall the game was really enjoyable i just i like i said i was about to uh kill the was it the queen gray or whatever and it just yeah it crashed again and i'm like i like i don't want yeah if you want you can send us some yeah i'll i can talk to you after this i can send you you could send me some screenshots of what's going on i can try to fix it yeah thank you that's kind of where we're at the moment <laughs> it's a little bare bones as far as our staff well i mean is there anything else about it that you would want to talk about because it's definitely a unique game Oh, well, of course I could talk about forever, but um, whether you'd want to hear it or not, I just, I was really looking forward to kind of going into more of the sci-fi elements of it because it's based on a real planet. It's based on Kepler-22b, um, which is a planet that's like 620 light years away. Um, so this is getting really nerdy, but, um, and the idea was what if we could actually go there because, you know, it's, it's 33,000 years from like actually being able to go there, so... Uh, it's impossible but what if we could and what would be there uh that was the idea and that's what the opening cutscene was going to kind of explore uh was like you know the humans going there the gray uh crash landing there invading them things like that i just wanted to go into um but also relationships i think was one of the things i was really looking forward to between the characters um and just kind of seeing uh, in a society with all animals, like, how would that work? Like, would there be wars? Uh, like, you know, who would be enemies? Who would be allies? Uh, like, what roles do they play since they all have different strengths? Um, some have more dexterous hands than others. Like, you know, who would be the intellectuals and who would be the architects? Like, I, I really want to go into that. Just, like, really dive into, like, what a, what an animal uh, anthropomorphic society would look like. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we didn't get to see too much character development besides the dude mm -hmm. hating that he left yeah, his oh, planet. And one thing I loved was that I loved the idea, and you see this in the demo, that like instead of the main character, I, I know you know this in Pokemon games especially, but like in most RPGs, the main character is like this guy that everyone loves and like thinks is the hero. Like he's, everybody's just like, oh yeah, like he's the strongest. Like, you know, he's the greatest, he's the master. But like what I really wanted was for this to be a teenager that no one likes, that he's a punk. Everybody just looks at him. He's like, oh, you're just a degenerate. Like, you know, and like even like his animal companions think he's like kind of a loser. <laughs> I really wanted to add that, that he has to kind of earn people's respect as opposed to he just like gets it right away because he's just like a kid. Um, that's something I was also excited about exploring. But anyway. Mm. Well, uh, 
hopefully you can, you know, in the year or two when your health gets better, you can do another Kickstarter because, you know, uh, I don't know what the future, my, you know, my future in the monster taming community is going to be in a year or two, but I do know I'm going to be paying attention to a lot of monster taming games for multiple years to come because many are just plain enjoyable. You know? Oh yeah, they're so good. I mean, the community, it's crazy just how many great games have come out of this. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to start playing those too and seeing where that goes. Well, I mean, I don't want to keep you longer than I, I guess I have to, so I'll let you go. But thank you very much for coming on and talking about this game that you made over a year thank ago now. Thank you for now. having me. This was really fun. It was really fun talking about my, my game. My baby. <laughs> it was really nice. Well, I guess uh, this is the end. <laughs> oh, I guess this is it. <laughs> yeah, thank right. you so much. And thank you for coming on. All right, see ya. See ya.